Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 16th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. Today ended up being the biggest day of the season so far with a couple nice highlights, so I'm looking forward to telling you all about it. Kim and I started out the morning at the Braddock Bay East Spit where it was pretty chilly with a moderate westerly wind and a little bit of sunshine popped out, but otherwise it was pretty cloudy. There was a group of galls gathered on the sandbar, and it was mostly herring galls, but this one stood out. This gall was much paler overall and had frosty wingtips, and it's got kind of a small rounded head with a small bill, giving the head and face a cute appearance. So this, I believe, is an Iceland gall. And if we do an open wing comparison, you see the herring gall here in the front. It has a lot of black here in the primaries, and then a paler patch in the inner primaries, and then more dark color throughout the secondaries. Compare that to the Iceland gall, which is just much more pale overall. Some darkness to the outer primaries, but a much whiter wing than we see on the herring gall. Here we have two male red-breasted mergansers, which are quite handsome ducks when you get a close view. And here are two male green-winged teal. We had 37 species from the East Spit. I got over to the Hawk Watch around 9 a.m. and there was a nice southwesterly wind that was light to moderate and cloudy skies. So it took a little while for the flight to get going, but as we reached the midday period, there started to be a lot more blue sky and that really launched a pretty good flight of raptors. I had been concerned that a lake breeze might kick in today, but that southwesterly wind actually shifted south a little bit sometimes, and it held off the lake breeze until we got to around 3 p.m., and that's when the lake breeze finally kicked in, and by 4 p.m., the flight had pretty much shut down from shifting inland. So we got most of a, a day's worth of flight in, and it was a really good day to be out at the Hawkwatch. Here we have one of the local adult Cooper's Hawks. Notice the long tail. Cooper's hawks have a capped appearance. So on the top of the head, there's this dark blue coloration or dark gray. And then the actual nape, which is the back of the neck, is paler. Whereas on an adult sharp-shinned hawk, this color on the top of the head would run all the way down onto the back. So when you see that pale nape, we know that it's an adult Cooper's hawk. Here's another exhibitor, but this one was small with really quick wing beats. We see a more squared off tail tip because all of the tail feathers are the same length. And we see some streaking here on the underside, but it's not a uh, brown teardrop streaking like we see on the Cooper's Hawks. It's a little messier looking. This is an immature sharp-shinned hawk. Here we see a bird with a two-toned underside, relatively long tail, and a very small head. This is a turkey vulture. And we had a good flight of turkey vultures today. We had a total of 321 that migrated. So turkey vulture numbers are starting to pick up. I saw the Presque Isle Hawk Watch in Erie, PA, had over a thousand turkey vultures today. So as we get into the next two weeks, we're really entering peak turkey vulture migration. Double-crested cormorant sightings are becoming more frequent, and we saw a couple small groups throughout the day. Here we have a flock of migrating tundra swans. And when I first arrived at Braddock Bay Park today, there was a field trip gathering from the Rochester Birding Association and they were all over by the buildings and looking out towards where the Eurasian widgeon has been seen. And while everyone was scoping the water, at some point there was some discussion that there were some tundra swans on the water. And I looked and I saw these three swans with black bills. Well, later someone from the other side of the bay reported that they had three trumpeter swans fly over. So all day I've kind of been kicking myself for not looking more closely at those three swans in the morning to see if they were tundra swans or trumpeter swans. So I don't know if those were the trumpeter swans or not, but sometimes it's just really annoying that you might have just missed a bird because you weren't looking carefully enough. Here we have a large, dark, migrating raptor with a lot of white here in the wing pit area. This is a juvenile bald eagle. Here we have a somewhat small, plain bird with a black and yellow face. This is a horned lark. And this was a cool sighting. Here we have a group of six birds. These were large corvids with deep croaking calls. This is a group of six common ravens. And it's not unusual for us to see a raven or two, maybe three sometimes, but getting up to six is more than we usually see. Here we see a hawk that looks like a flying cross. We see a very long tail, relatively large head, and long wings that are held straight with rounded wingtips. So this is an exhibitor, and this is a Cooper's Hawk. 
and we look at the underside and we see some brown teardrop streaking concentrated on the upper breast. This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Also notice the somewhat rounded tip to the tail because the outer tail feathers are a bit shorter than the central ones. Here we have an adult bald eagle and this one's in a glide posture so you see how it tucks those wingtips back. And here's an absolutely terrible photo of a hawk, which is moving to the right, if you couldn't tell. But even just looking at the overall colors of this bird, we see some splotchy darks and light colors. On the tail, we see maybe some white near the base. So this is actually a light morph rough-legged hawk. And here's another award-winning photo. This was a compact vulture with a short tail with a straight trailing edge and it was completely dark except for white at the wingtips. So this is actually a black vulture, which when I'm in Delaware, it's extremely common. When I'm back home in PA, they're fairly common as well. But up here in New York, it's a bit of a rarity. So it was a, a special treat, and it's a bird we can get excited about up here. Here we have a hawk, and it's that classic hawk shape that the Buteo genus has. If we look at the plumage, we see dark here in the shoulder area, dark patagial bars. We see a very faint belly band on this bird, so this is a red-tailed hawk. Now we see that the wings are a bit pale with no dark trailing edge, and the tail is not red. It's more brownish with some bars on it. This is a juvenile red-tailed hawk, and notice that it's missing at least one tail feather here in the middle. Here we see a large raptor that's a mix of darks and whites. We see a dark head, but it has a lot of white here on the breast and throughout the underside of the wings. Whenever you see a really messy eagle like this with a lot of splotchy white everywhere, that's an immature bald eagle. And this bird looks like it's coming up on two years old. Here's a bird that streamed over pretty high, but it was a lifer for some people on the platform. Here we see a large dark bird. And we see a long tail, but a smaller head shape. So this is actually a golden eagle. And I think I'm seeing a little bit of white patches in the wings, which would make this the first immature golden eagle of the season. Here we have a bird that's two-toned underneath. So we see a lot of black on the body and the wing coverts, but then a lot of silver throughout the rest of the wings. Very, very, very short tail. Oh, wait a minute. That's because this bird has no tail at all. This is a turkey vulture that was missing its tail. So basically a giant flying wing. So something we occasionally see and they seem to be able to fly pretty well despite not having their tail. But it's always a little bit humorous when one of these flies by. Here's another hawk gliding overhead. We see dark patagial bars and a dark belly band. This is a red tailed hawk. And on this one we do see a dark trailing edge to the wings and we see that red tail. So this is an adult red tailed hawk. Here we have another eagle, and we see a lot of white throughout the underside, including in this wing pit area, which is a sign of a young bald eagle. I believe this is a juvenile, although the belly here is quite pale for a juvenile, so it looks like maybe it's beginning to molt into its next plumage already. Here we have another flying cross, so we should be thinking Accipiter. Looks like it's orange underneath, so that eliminates American goshawk. So we have Cooper's hawk versus sharp shinned hawk. Well, we see a tail tip that looks somewhat rounded. It looks like the outer tail feathers might be a little bit shorter than the central ones. We also see a, a head that sticks out a pretty good distance and wings that are mostly held straight. So this is an adult Cooper's hawk. Here's another hawk where we see dark patagial bars and a belly band. So this is another red-tailed hawk. Dark trailing edge to the wings, red tail, make it an adult. Here we have a swallow where we see some blue on the head and completely white undersides. This is a tree swallow, and we had about a dozen tree swallows today, so those numbers are slowly starting to pick up as well. And there was no sign of the barn swallow that we saw yesterday. And as I went to leave today, there was one final flock of tundra swans. Taking a look at eBird, today we had 56 species at the Hawkwatch. I picked up two new species for the season today, which were Iceland gall and black vulture. And some people also heard a flyover American pipit, but I didn't hear that myself, so I didn't count it. And taking a look at hawk count for our migrant raptor totals for today, we had one black vulture, 321 turkey vultures, 30 bald eagles, three northern harriers, two sharp shinned hawks, five Cooper's hawks. For Buteos, we had 49 red-shouldered hawks, 78 red-tailed hawks, and one rough-legged hawk. We had one golden eagle and two American kestrels for a total of 493 migrating raptors today.
That brings the March total to 1,325 and the season total to 1,483. And taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, maybe a little bit of sunshine in the morning and then cloudier into the afternoon. Winds are going to be from the west, moderate to strong and strengthening into the afternoon. So I'm thinking we'll get a bit of migration tomorrow, especially looking at how many turkey vultures went through PA today. Um, turkey vultures should be able to push through on these winds unless they get really, really strong in the afternoon. So I'm thinking that tomorrow we'll get a, a bit of a flight. There's no southerly component to the wind, but westerly winds can be okay for us. Um, but if you come out, be sure to bundle up. It's going to feel pretty chilly with those strong winds and maybe be a little bit uncomfortable on the platform as the wind uh, knocks us around a little bit. For Monday, it's looking cloudy with some snow showers possible, high only around 40, and again, moderate to strong westerly winds, 15 to 25 miles per hour. So expect light to moderate migration. And for Tuesday, looking like cloudy skies with snow showers, high of only 36, and again, westerly winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So a couple days of westerly winds coming up. They can be okay winds, but they're going to be on the stronger side with colder temperatures. So we've been spoiled with the warm temperatures. Now it's back to winter a little bit. All right. Well, the winds cooperated today and we ended up with a pretty good day of hawk watching and we had a pretty good crowd of people come out to the platform. So I hope you can join us soon as well for a day of hawk watching at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of these daily updates. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.